Hi, this is Heidi Nelson, CEO at Duffy Health Center, and welcome to this edition of Duffy Doings, our show about issues relating to homelessness and health care on Cape Cod and what's going on at Duffy Health Center. Today our show is going to be about a very exciting event coming up in February. It's called the Shelter for the Storm Concert. And with us today we have Larry Brown, who is a humanities and social studies teacher at Cape Cod Academy and is also the concert director for Shelter from the Storm. Nellie Stidham and Abby, Addie Terry Walsh, both students at Cape Cod Academy. And finally, Leah West, who is a program manager at Duffy Health Center. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Really <laughs> glad to have you here today. So everybody is aware we've had a number of episodes of, of Duffy Doings that uh, talk about the issue of opiate addiction um, on Cape Cod. And recently, um, statistics continue to come out that really talk about the problem and emphasize um, the danger and what's going on here on the Cape. Um, a study came out from the county, from Barnstable County, actually almost two years ago, that estimated that there are over 5,000 people on the Cape each year who experience addiction to opiates. So either opiate pain medication or heroin. And uh, more recently, we received information about opiate-related deaths. Now this is for the entire Commonwealth for the state of Massachusetts. In 2015, that number was 1,379 people that died um, intentionally or unintentionally from opiate overdose. And that is an 8% increase um, from 2014 when that number was 1,282. So a uh, serious and, and continuing uh, to grow problem. One of the solutions to opiate addiction is a treatment program called Medication Assisted Treatment. And it's a program that we offer at Duffy Health Center where we prescribe medications that are intended to help people cope, um, to not feel the withdrawal and the pain um, of uh, withdrawal from opiate addiction. And we provide counseling and therapy while they're on these medications to really kick the habit of opiate addiction. So some of those medications might be familiar to our viewing audience. Uh, methadone is one of them that's been around for a long time. Um, and two other medications, one is called Vivitrol, which is a once a month injection, and the other is called Suboxone, which is taken orally um, on a daily basis. Um, these programs have really been um, really been promoted uh, by the federal government and by state government and we'll talk more about what we're doing at Duffy um, which is to expand those kinds of programs and services to teenagers. So it used to be that if you had, uh, if you wanted to access medication assisted treatment on Cape Cod um, you had to drive up to Boston um, one or two times a week um, in order to participate in the program but now at Duffy Health Center um, we're offering medication assisted treatment um, uh, to young people. We hired a number of new staff and, and Leah will be talking about that. But what we're really excited about is this effort that we're here to talk about today, which is an effective approach with teenagers helping other teenagers. And this year, the Shelter from the Storm concert, which is put on by teenagers, high schoolers from across Cape Cod, um, to help this year, the, the beneficiary of the, pro, of the concert will be other teenagers on Cape Cod. So Larry, yes. let's start with you. Okay. You're the concert director. What is the Shelter from the Storm concert and how did it come about? What's okay. its history? Um, we've been doing benefit coffee houses at Cape Cod Academy for the last 31 years. Um, we estimate we've raised somewhere between 60 and $70,000 oh for, for all kinds of charities doing it. Um, years ago, uh, I coached, I started the girls soccer program and we got an invitation to participate in the Leningrad Cup. Uh, we were the first American team to sign up to do it. Uh, we had some kids who could afford that and some who couldn't, and I have done coffee houses in college and earlier in my life. So we had the idea, let's do a benefit coffee house and raise money for the kids on the team who, who needed the help so we could all go. Um, that all went really well, and then the Soviet Union fell apart, oh and we goodness, had parents yeah. who were concerned that their kids might be going into some kind of a war zone, so suddenly we weren't going to the Leningrad <laughs> Cup. Um, we were all dressed up and nowhere to go, yeah. we, but, we, but we had raised some mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. So we got back together, sat down with the performers, and said, what do you want to do with it? And everybody agreed we should give it away. 
So, uh, the, so the performers got to pick who got the money. And we've been doing that for the last 31 years, and I've been running these things. I, I, asked, I think the one we just did last Friday might be my 91st oh my goodness. coffee house, okay. <laughs> which, which is what happens when you get to be really old. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. So then 10 years ago, uh, the Barnstable County Human Rights Commission organized a human rights academy for young people on Cape and invited all the schools to send representatives. And the challenge they gave out to us 10 years ago was that we should pick some local area of human rights, human suffering, and either do a program to raise public awareness or actually do something. So our original bunch of uh, five kids um, got back in the car afterwards and we started talking and, and the idea came up, well, we, we know how to do coffee houses. Let's do a mega coffee house, get the best singers, dancers, and musicians from high schools around the Cape. Um, do it at the college, at the Tilden Arts Center, and raise some serious money. Mm -hmm. So um, we were pretty heavy on rock bands the first time around. <laughs> uh, it was kind of testosterone rich. How times change. But, um, but, um, but we raised enough money to feed the Noah mm -hmm. shelter for four months wow. with the first one. And a representative from the show, from the shelter, came backstage at, at, right after we finished. Mm -hmm. And it was pandemonium back there, and the kids were all high as kites. And, and part of the deal that we were working out was that any kids who were not performing at the moment were available as stage hands to move stuff around mm -hmm. for everybody else. Um, and we'd begun to work out the idea that solo acts could be in front of the curtain and behind the curtain, everybody's going crazy, moving stuff around and holding up pianos mm -hmm. and setting up drums. Everybody and, has a way to participate. Everybody, everybody gets in this. Mm -hmm. um, so he quieted everybody down and said, look, there will be people who will be alive this time next year because of what you did. And that had tremendous impact on me and on the kids that were with me and the kids who have been doing this ever since. Um, and certainly with what we're doing this year for Duffy, um, if we can get kids in this program, um, I think you and these guys will be saving lives. And right. the kids who perform will be saving lives. And the people who contribute and the people who come will be saving lives. Yep. And that's huge. Um, I mean, everybody acts like it's a big deal when you ask the kids to mow the lawn or take out the garbage. And, and these are kids who are doing a lot. And, and, they're doing, and they'll get into that, but they do all the organization for this thing. So uh, before we go any farther, yeah. tell us, when is the concert okay. this year? What's the date and the time and location? Friday, February 17th. It's the Friday that all the schools get out on vacation. Oh, okay, okay. before school. What vacation. we've learned is that on that day, there are no basketball games, no other things going on in high schools across the Cape. Right. We own that Friday. Very good. Um, so it's Friday the 17th of February, mm -hmm. 7 o'clock. Um, to around 8.30-ish, mm -hmm. uh, Tilden Arts Center at the college. Uh, we've been doing, this is our 10th one at that place, and the same crew are doing it now that we're doing it then, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they run it really, really well. They yeah. do, and they, and they make everybody sound mm -hmm. good and look good, and they love doing this thing. So in addition to ticket sales, you also um, talk to uh, foundations yes. and donors um, to help sponsor the concert. Yes. So who do you have lined up to sponsor this uh, we, year? We, the, the checks are still coming in. Yes. But, but, uh, but I'll, I'll talk about folks who have been helping us from the very beginning. Anyway, Cape Cod 5 came in at the very, very beginning, and they've been with this and uh, supporting the kids every year ever since. Cape Air came in right away. Mm -hmm. uh, Congre uh, uh, State Senator Dan Wolf and his family. Um, I mean, he runs Cape Air, but his family has, been, has also been been behind us from the from the very very beginning, uh, the Delahunt group, former Congressman Delahunt, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. have been sponsors almost all the way through. Um, let's see, we've got uh, Riddell Plumbing in in Osterville. Uh -huh. nice. uh, we've got Shepley Wood has come in. Nice. Um, uh, Cape Cod, Wendy's of Cape Cod has been renting the auditorium for us from the very beginning. Very good. And that's and he's a board member at Duffy Health Center. Well, he, yeah, he's, <laughs> so, he's, he's, a, he's a good guy. <laughs> right. But he's regardless of who we're helping. He's rented the place for us. That's great. Uh, all the time. And that allows us to tell people that we are 100% efficient, that every mm -hmm. dime we get goes straight to this year, straight to you. There's no overhead in this. Nobody's taking out a salary or, or anything. Duff, you know, because of, of, of Wendy's. Um, so there's a plug for Wendy's. There's fast food, <laughs> and then there's Wendy's. 
Um, those are, 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 are good folks. Uh, we're, we're talking to a bunch of other folks right now. I don't want to, I don't want to put anybody on the sure, spot by naming course. somebody that's just talking to us. Okay. Uh, we're also starting to make appeals to medical groups this year. Nice. Um, so there's a couple uh, folks that we're just starting to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, and we're hoping particularly because of what you're doing that this is something that doctors are going to understand mm -hmm. and, and, and want to be want to be behind. Well, let's hope that's a winning strategy. That mm -hmm. just so I'm, I'm hoping I haven't forgotten anybody yeah. to, to yeah. make anybody angry at me. I don't so think so. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Addie, uh, what are what have the students been doing to prepare uh, for the concert? It's a lot of work. It is. Well, yeah. um, <laughs> as student directors in the fall, we start going to um, local talent shows at different schools mm -hmm. and. Um, there we get contact information for different students that we like and um, we later contact them and have them come to our school and perform in one of our coffee houses to um, sort of audition them. Nice. Um, mm -hmm. And we um, did that last Friday, I believe, at the last coffee house that we just had and we had some great performers. Mm -hmm. And anything else? I don't think so. We definitely um, meet with donors and companies mm -hmm. um, such as Duffy Health mm -hmm. Care Center um, to see where we're going to give the money to. Um, this year was a special case. We decided really early on that we mm -hmm. really liked the cause. Um, but in years past, we've spent almost all of fall and sometimes even um, the spring for the next year interviewing different places to see um, what mission we align with the most that year to give the money to. Tell them what you did last year, because that was pretty spectacular. Who we gave it to. Oh, last year, yes. um, our, we decided that we wanted to donate the money from the concert to um, Safe Harbor Center for um, Battered Women and Children in order to renovate the remaining 10 units mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. help make the living conditions for the families that are living there just a little bit better. Um, and they told us that they needed about $15,000 in order to mm -hmm. finish everything, and uh, we managed to raise just under 20. And wow. so we that's were neat. able. And you know, another example of a program that's really addressing the issue of addiction mm -hmm. yeah. um, on the Cape and families struggling with addiction. Nellie, um, how many schools and how many kids? are involved and if, if you don't have it's not all figured out for this year maybe you can remember what last year how many schools did we have and how many acts and how many kids involved so every year we have around 15 acts okay um, we have a few very large ones so last year we had um, the conservatory come mm -hmm. um, their youth orchestra performed they were fantastic um, there was also kids from all over Cape Cod in that orchestra um, I definitely know that we have had solo acts from Barnstable, DY, um, Sandwich in the past, mm -hmm. but we also do um, Beth Walsh. They come and perform with mm -hmm. us as well as dance designs, mm -hmm. um, and those are large numbers that include kids from all over Cape. And Sturgis, you mentioned Sturgis earlier. Sturgis, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. We have a few bands from Sturgis this year. Yeah. Very good, very good. So let's uh, shift topics a little bit here. And Leah, uh, tell us about your position at Duffy. What is it um, and, that you do? And describe the folks who are on the team and what their special expertise is. Well, we have a great team um, as the medication assisted treatment program manager, otherwise known as the MAT team. Um, it we consists of physicians, nurses. Um, we have a licensed therapist and we also have um, a patient navigator and that's really the pivotal position of this program. My position is I oversee everything in the program, um, make sure that we stay on our budget, stay within our budget and that the bills get paid. Uh, but we, the, the navigator is really the big part of the program. Um, we have a, a young lady who is responsible for helping keep the kids on track, make sure that they have transportation um, to and from their appointments, make sure that they're not in crisis. She will uh, relentlessly stalk them to make sure <laughs> that they get to their appointments on time. She's a text, texting fiend. She's isn't a she? texting yeah. fiend. I would say 80% of her job is texting, um, and they always text back. And um, I, it's worked tremendously. I can't tell you how well it's worked. 
great. Mm -hmm. And we also have a contract with Cape Cod Healthcare for a very part-time child psychiatrist. Yes. Um, and the therapist that you mentioned is also trained in child and adolescent yes. therapy, which is new for us. Yes, um, we're very uh, fortunate to have a child yeah. psychiatrist so a on team. Mm -hmm. In a wonderful space, tell us about the space. You were the <gasps> chief the decorator, space. weren't you, Lou? I was the chief decorator. <laughs> I did have help, but very good. Um, the space is set up. It's not a medical setting in any way. It's um, based in a it looks like a, an apartment, a home, mm -hmm. but it's very geared toward young adults. It's kind of, um, it's very comfortable. It's very relaxing. The colors are relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted these young adults, these teens and young adults to feel like it was a home setting and not that they weren't coming to something that they had to come to, that they could feel mm -hmm. relaxed and comfortable and welcome. Okay, great. And uh, all 100% of the proceeds uh, of the event will go to support uh, the Teen MAT program. So we're so grateful uh, to you guys. So grateful. So um, <laughs> Addie and Nellie, what are some of the acts? You said uh, usually around 15 acts. Mm -hmm. And I heard about rock bands and dancing <laughs> groups. And yeah. so what are the different kinds of acts that perform? Um, we have a really great jazz band coming this year from DY. DY. So Very that's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. um, we have, like she, like Nellie mentioned, um, Beth Walsh and Dance Designs will both be doing mm -hmm. um, some big numbers, and um, Cape the, Conservatory, yeah, the Cape Cod Conservatory, um, as well as a bunch of solo singers and dancers of all different styles. Yeah, we definitely try and vary our acts. So. Um, this year, we're looking to have a hip hop dancer. Oh, cool. Um, and then we also have uh, one of our fellow peers, actually, is very good on the piano. Mm -hmm. He's playing a classical piece. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just like. It's, it's a little bit of everything. It's yeah. eclectic. Yes. 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 I know exactly. in the past you've had, because I go every year, because I love <laughs> the concert, um, you had a Chinese. Uh, students that yes. were here at the school and they performed musical instruments and did yes. uh, Chinese dance and will there be any of that this year? Or well have the those piano students? player I was actually talking about is an exchange student. Okay. Um, He's fantastic. He's amazing. Sadly <laughs> our dancer um, from years past who's in our grade will not be here this year. She's um, going on vacation a day early, so oh. <laughs> she has an audition in New York. Oh, and fantastic! That's, yes. you know, yeah. she has to. President, fantastic. So. Um, are either of you performing, or are no. you kind of behind the scenes? We're, we're pretty much behind. There's a the lot scenes. to go <laughs> to go and do behind the scenes. Yeah. So. Okay. Great. So, Larry, um, why do you think this program and this concert are so important to Cape Cod and our community? It's a couple things. One, the, the show itself. Mm -hmm. um, isn't cute, it's adult good. Mm -hmm. In other words, a lot of grown-ups are going to this thing who don't have anybody on stage, they don't have any family mm -hmm. involved. They're going because it's, it's a good mm -hmm. show. Um, and in fact, if you look at a number of, um, of national TV talent shows, like America's Got Talent, you'll see kids the same age or younger than the ones we've got on stage mm -hmm. uh, as semi-finalists. I mean, there's a lot of really good talent out. Uh, and it provides a place for them to, to do their thing, to perform in, in public mm -hmm. in, in front of a serious audience, for one. Um, second, um, is, you know, as I'm getting a little older here, uh, you wonder where the next wave is going to come from. Who is going to care about this stuff when we're gone? Um, and who will do the things necessary to support them? Like, you know, and, and the answer is they will. And they're, and they're already doing it. Um, and we've got over 200 kids with each concert who can walk away from this thing knowing that, that they've done real good. I mean, and, and the entertainment thing has a lot of power to it because a lot of high school kids, uh, over a billion hours of community service are done by American high school kids really? every year. Yeah. When I was in the, you know, a kid in the 60s, and we protested and you know, we made some noise and we got some <laughs> things done. And a, a tiny number of people risked their lives in the South doing voter registration. But if you asked my generation, how many people did you house? Mm -hmm. How many people did you feed or clothe? The answer would essentially be none. Mm -hmm. And that's different. If kids do a car wash or a bake sale, then they work their fannies off and they walk away with $217. Mm -hmm. The arts have power. And when you do, when you organize a show like this, we can, I mean, 10 living units at Safe Harbor last year got rebuilt. Uh, Congress, uh, Senator uh, Dan Wolf, had, I had dinner with him and he had just come out of there. 
and he was steam mm -hmm. was coming out of his ears. And, and he said something. The Cape Cod Council of Churches was trying to offer to pa individual parishes to say adopt one unit and try and, and fix it, and the money just wasn't coming. Mm -hmm. And the kids did it. Yeah. The kids did it. Yeah. Um, it's and hugely uh, important to have. And, that kind of flexible dollars that go to an agency yeah. to be able to do those things that are hard to get grants yeah. for things yeah. like painting a, a bedroom. <laughs> yeah, or, or you know, yeah. putting in new windows and, yeah. and bath fit, and fixtures yeah. and all that. Um, and it, it, I get to tell people, one, the kids pick who gets the money. Mm -hmm. They picked you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we've, I've done stuff with you guys in past years and all that, but they were little when that happened. Um, <laughs> they, they made that call. Mm -hmm. um, and They'll run the concert. I, I get up in the beginning and I thank everybody for coming and I get out of there and I take pictures for the rest of the night. I don't go back there till it's done. Right. And they, you guys, run it. Right. And last year, because the theater, is, it's important that we end on time and that there's right. some timing things here. They have right. to time everything out. Well, and um, twice in the past, um, the, the concert benefited the Veterans Stand Down, Stand Down mm -hmm. which is a service fair that yeah. we did um, through mm -hmm. Duffy, yeah. which we will do again. But mm -hmm. um, uh, so it, it is um, just fantastic what and you guys Shelter do. and you guys won five congressional citations for this. Right. Um, and it's important for the viewers to understand, too, we've raised over $100,000 in the first nine years mm -hmm. doing these concerts. Yeah. And we're learning and getting better all the time. Yeah. Leah, um, going back to the program and, and the kids that we're serving, um, what, are, what are we hearing? We, we opened for service with this young adult and teen program. Um, in mid-September, and mm -hmm. so you, you get to hear from, from the kids, and, and what's going on with them? What are they saying about what's going on? I, there? I, um, there's not a night that I don't leave the group, the teen group, in tears. Mm. <laughs> um, they are a great group of kids. Um, we talk to them very openly about things that are going on. And there hasn't been one group, except for the begin the very first one when they were all very quiet mm -hmm. and apprehensive. But since then, um, they are they love to come up and tell me, I love it here. I hear mm -hmm. um, this doesn't feel like a medical place at all. I can't wait to come to group. Um, we talk about our patient navigator and the work she's doing because she's the closest point of contact for these kids and she's gotten to know them very well. She's, you know, and they, mm. they call or text her when something's going wrong or they feel they, they're gonna use again. And lately the texts that have been coming in that say, you've changed my life. Thank you, I'm so grateful to you and to Duffy for everything you've done for me. Um, they have dreams, they have hopes. We ask them what they want um, out of their recovery. The number one thing that they said that they wanna do is go to college. It's the number one thing that they say. Um, and they wanna learn how to cook. That's the other <laughs> thing. So uh, it's just, it's been the most um, touching experience for me to see these kids, cause they're kids and as a mom, you know, you see these kids and I want to take them all home and, <laughs> and read them stories and put them to bed, but <laughs> they, they We don't are, do that. We don't do that, no. Um, but they're just, it's just been amazing, the feedback that we've gotten from them. And I think the biggest thing is, is they're referring each other to yeah. the program. Our yeah. biggest referral source right now is the kids themselves. And word of mouth. Word of mouth is mm -hmm. big with this population. Yep. So what, what are you finding are the biggest stumbling blocks? Um, what are the kids saying about um, how hard it is to get into treatment? What are some of the biggest stumbling blocks? Well, there? there's still the stigma of treatment. Um, you know, they don't want to be thought of as addicts. There are so many paths that led them down this road. It's not um, I think there's a stigma thinking they chose to do this and some of them did not. Um, there were other factors, but there's definitely still a stigma. There are some um, that are afraid of treatment. They don't know what it entails and what that means to them. Transportation to treatment has been a big issue um, mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. So we're trying very hard to, you know, um, do workarounds, find workarounds for that, for transportation for them. And also, oh, they like to make money. They're working. Mm -hmm. And so our program where, you know, we've built the program around mm -hmm. their needs. So our groups are late afternoons and nights so they can still work and, and come and get the treatment they need. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. So, Larry, um, mm -hmm. talk about your background. How did you get into teaching, and why did you um, choose humanities and, and social studies? It's a circuitous route. I was in sales, marketing, and product design for, really? for years. <laughs> and, um, and some of the graphics that you see, is, you know, I, I learned how to do that back in the, in the 70s. Um, I worked for a company that uh, built uh, rockets out in Arizona mm. and began traveling to schools and talking to kids about the space program and working with some national conferences that brought young people together from all over the country who were interested in aerospace. And I found I really, and I, when I was a kid in school, I was thinking either I'd be a pastor or I'd be a teacher. Mm. Um, and then I got into the business thing for a while. Uh, but once I started working with kids, that, it that, was all over. That was, it took a couple <laughs> years to figure out how to support my family doing it. Right. Um, so I continued to do that for a, for, for a number of years. Um, and then I finally just had an epiphany, and I, I, you know, you can be very bewitched by things that you're good at into thinking that because I'm so good at it, that's what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, it takes a while sometimes because I was good in sales. Mm -hmm. um, it just wasn't what I was put on the planet to do. Well, and another thing that you're good at is writing your weekly column uh, for the <laughs> Cape Cod Times. I'm sure our viewers are familiar with you from, from that aspect as well. What's it like, um, what's the difference between mm -hmm. writing about an issue and talking about an issue? Um, mm -hmm. Well, one, when you, when you write, when you publish, especially in an opinion piece, and we get to talk to maybe 80,000 people a week. Um, some people really aren't going to like what you're, what you're, what you're saying. <laughs> and, I mean, really don't like sure. what, what you're saying. Um, and you need, to get your, you, you need to be very, very careful. Uh, it's important to have the facts on straight. And I, I know that there's all this talk about fake news and all that. But newspapers uh, and, and print magazines have very high standards for accuracy. Um, and if, the, if, if I send something in and my editor isn't sure about something, I'll get an email back and say, hey, wh where did you get this information? Where does this come from? Mm -hmm. And is it from, is it from a reliable source? Mm -hmm. Until that just becomes almost instinct. That, you, you know, you know you, I, I, anyone who reads my column knows that I'm a you know, flaming liberal. Fine. But I know that some of my readers are Republican. And for a while, I, for a while, once in a while, I used to tick people off on purpose. I, I, a line comes up, just a line, and you, and you think, I, I, it's, it's too good, I, have to, I love this, i got to use this. <laughs> and uh, I, I finally, I, I hurt somebody's feelings, and um, we went around on it, um, and I, the next column I published an apology. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't wrong in the facts, as it turned out, but I went personal, mm -hmm. and, I, and I regretted it. And I published an apology in the paper the next time, and I've... I'm aware that there are times that I tick people off, mm -hmm. but I'm not doing it on purpose. Right. And f when I first started writing once in a while, it was fun to get a little zinger in. Once, right, you know. right. But I'm trying, right. trying not to do no, that. I, as a leader who and, speaks in front of yeah. people all the time, I know, yeah. I know exactly what you're it, talking it, about. I, I do want to ask the gals before, yeah. we, uh, before we finish up here today, um, I understand you're both seniors yes. and uh, just want to know what is in store for you. It's January and uh, graduation will be here before you know it. What happens next year for you guys? Well, we're both off to college. Um, Where I, are you going? I'm going to uh, American University next year in Washington, D.C. Very good. Um, I'm going to be studying um, international studies. Okay. Yes, well, I hope um, to be going to Johns Hopkins next year. I have not heard back from them yet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very interested in their mm -hmm. neuroscience program, actually, okay. um, which is somewhat related to these topics, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fingers crossed. Right. Well, good luck to both of you. If you're I a Johns you're Hopkins be... alumni and you're out there in our audience, <laughs> This is one very talented young person. I've worked with her for a while. Put in a plug. Okay, so we have just a few seconds okay. left for Larry to give us your final pitch about the concert. Okay. Remind everybody about the details and uh, adults, final pitch. Adults, 10 bucks. Students, 5 Tickets at the door. Um, 17th of February, Cape Cod Community College, Tilden Arts Center. And I promise we will entertain you. Um, we, uh, I, I think there will be some graphics that will be available on, uh, for people to see. Uh, if you want to make a donation, and I absolutely hope you do, um, please send them to Cape Cod Academy in Osterville, Massachusetts, 02655. Mark the checks shelter so we'll know what, what they're for. Um, that's important. We get uh, a, a, between one and $2,000 
from people who read a column, Very hear good. things like this, Very good. And, and, and be a part of this. That's it uh, today for this edition of Duffy Doings. Thank you so much to all of my guests today. Thank, Thank you for you. being Thank here. You for Thank you for having us. us. Thanks for watching.